The question is, how do you survive inflation? And a growing question, how do you survive inflation and make more money on Social Security disability benefits without putting those benefits at risk? A lot of people are seeing the videos and shorts that I'm actually putting up. I'm going to probably be putting up a whole lot more here uh, in the coming days and weeks as uh, I'm showing folks out there how to make $700 a day. And it really, it's not that hard. It's not that difficult. Honestly, you can make way more, you can make way less. But at the end of the day, it's it, it, it makes sense. It aligns with businesses and uh, what I've been talking about for quite a while now. And businesses are in positions. Now, granted, we got businesses in positions where they're laying off employees. We got hiring freezes. We got layoffs. We got terminations. We got store closures. We got all sorts of things going on. But at the end of the day, the businesses are trying to do their best to uh, reduce and cut back on their spending, uh, which can ultimately have an effect on the amount of money and profit they make. In the meantime, while trying to figure out ways to increase revenue, while increased revenues and lower costs and overhead will ultimately equal greater profits. And this is what businesses need to survive, especially now with everything that's going on in the economy. Businesses are getting uh, creative. They're getting creative and they're becoming even more savvy and utilizing the tools available to them, much like I'm doing the same and other members of the group are doing and other friends and family in my circle are doing and have been doing for years. And now it's just kind of like, now it's kind of, you got to kick it up a notch because the writing is on the wall for so many different people. The writing is on the wall for the ill-prepared that devastation could be literally right around the corner. But the writing is also on the wall for the folks that are prepared, that have been preparing for all sorts of things, which now is going to be a great time and opportunity to capitalize on what what on wealth, basically. Because businesses and companies and corporations and brands and sponsors are all going to be throwing money out because there's two trains of thought here. Some folks think that uh, we're, we're in a recession, so it's time to pull back and uh, batten down the hatches and uh, just, you know, pretty much like uh, crawl up in a ball in the corner and hide and wait till it's over. While the other train of thought, which would probably more align with the wealth building strategies of Warren Buffett, which is be greedy when others are fearful. So if you're in business and your competition is fearful, then it would only make sense for anybody out there willing to uh, see their business succeed would be to be greedy at that time and capitalize on all the available market share and customers and revenues that you can get because your competition is pretty much called it quits. Now, I'm not talking about jacking up prices and price gouging and anything like that. I'm just talking about just being greedy in the sense of advertising. And in a recession, it's probably one of the best times to advertise because theoretically in a recession, a lot of things are on discount or should be trending towards discount. We're seeing uh, car values come down. We're seeing uh, some home values come down. That's a little bit of a slippery slope there. We're seeing stock prices come down. We're seeing uh, a lot of different commodities come down in price as consumers are really focused, they're pretty much focused on like on a few select choice categories that stay that stay up. Food stays up. Food will probably always stay up. Food is always going to be uh, a going up in price. But, uh, you know, with that being said, there are discounts available. So, so for some, think about it. Some businesses and corporations will look at it and say, look, we can get advertisers at a discount because, uh, you know, prices are going down. So let's take our advertising, our marketing budget and double or triple the effectiveness of it because we're getting a discount right now because people are lowering their prices. 
But the cool part about it is for the lean businesses, for the smaller creators, for the smaller influencers, the smaller brands, the smaller overhead, the uh, the smaller players, the discount in advertising is still a huge win because your overhead cost is pretty much like zero. Like my overhead cost is pretty low. So if an advertiser typically hypothetically would go to a, 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 a more than likely they're going to go to a broker, they have a broker and then that broker has a relationship with creators and influencers and, and, and different businesses and whatnot. And so you go to the broker and the broker has a fee and then the broker is like, all right, who can I get to promote this product for this company, for my client, for this brand and save money? Well, you could go to Mr. Beast who has, you know, I don't know how many millions of subscribers he has collectively throughout all his channels, but you go to somebody like Mr. Beast and he'll say, okay, you know, I'll do it, but it's going to start at 500 grand half a million bucks for me to do it. And so it's like, wow, that's a lot of money. And then you work your way down the list, down different creators. And then you get to some creators that are like, you know, we can do it for a hundred grand. And for them, it's still good. It's fine. But then you get even further down the list to a specific targeted group of creators that have a great reach and they have a great community. And it's like, well, we, we could do it for 25,000. And then it's like, so the company is going to get the advertising. They're going to get great reach because they're going to be super selective and almost like laser sniper focused on who they're going after. Because Mr. Beast, somebody like Mr. Beast, yeah, he's got a big name. He's got a big audience. He's got a huge price tag. But it's not really focused in in, in particular direction unless your direction is games and, you know, whatnot. But odds are right now the business is trying to capitalize on market share and revenue or selling products, they're selling solutions, they're selling business, they're selling things that make money. And Mr. Beast is really more so about like entertainment and fun and humor and games and whatnot. But so when you go and approach a smaller creator who has this laser focus, that's honed their skills, that has super low overhead, and it's like, hey, here's 25 grand for a promotion. They're like, wait, you know, that's more valuable to them than the half a million to Mr. Beast because their their overhead is so much lower. And that's what's going on right now. Now, granted, some folks may disagree with what they're seeing in YouTube studio and what they're seeing with their CPM and with their RPM and things like that. But what I'm talking about is a level of monetization that has nothing to do with YouTube and Google AdSense revenue. It has everything to do with you and your network and your marketing and your brand and your connections and knowing brokers and having deals and just ways of creating money and income now through the tools available to you and pretty much everybody, everybody for the most part, uh, especially, you know, in certain countries like United States, I pretty much everybody. Certain other countries they have different, you know, rules and regulations and limitations, but United States it's like yeah, it's pretty much available to everybody. Regardless of where you're from, where you came from, where you live, your education level, the school you went to, your social status, your income, like none of that matters. Like it's available to anybody. And, you know, literally it comes down to uh, I was actually watching Ty Lopez and he was quoting or uh, referencing a quote, I think from Elon Musk. And he says, uh, you know, basically you got to solve, if you want to make money, you got to solve a problem. Okay. And the current problem that exists is that businesses need sales. Why is that a problem? Well, because money's tight, inflation's a bear, the economy is in the toilet or trending towards that direction. Consumers are going to be, consumers are going to continue to spend. However, consumers are going to be very mindful and very cautious and very selective about where they spend, especially for discretionary items. But in my opinion, consumers are potential business owners. Consumers are potential CEOs and presidents and owners and entrepreneurs. 
So what they're going to buy more so than anything else is more than likely they're going to buy things and tools and they just products available to them, whether they're physical or digital, that will help them start and or grow or improve their business to help make them money, especially with their jobs being on the line, their employment being on the line, inflation continuously going up. The smart folks out there who are trying to prepare for whatever it is they're trying to prepare for know and realize that they need the money to do it, especially even if what you're preparing for is just basic survival. If you're on a fixed income and every cost continues to go up, but your income doesn't, then it's kind of hard to just get by. It's kind of hard to just survive. So Ty Lopez said that or quoted Elon Musk. I think it was Elon Musk. And he says, solve a simple problem and get a simple paycheck. So basically, you know, business is about solutions. And the way businesses make money is they provide solutions. So if if the solution that you're providing is a simple one, then you'll get a simple paycheck. But on the flip side, if you solve a hard enough problem, and then basically the people and the world will pretty much just give you all their money, which makes sense. It's kind of like what Elon Musk has been doing with Tesla, with SpaceX, with uh Starlink, with everything that he's doing, he's trying to solve some of the biggest problems. And, you know, I would say that he's been successful with it. Uh, You know, one of the problems he solved early on was PayPal. Granted, PayPal isn't a fan favorite right now, but he solved a problem of transferring money uh, pretty much instantaneously through the internet. And that's how he builds wealth. That's how he is, I think, the richest man in the world right now. In addition to some other really smart financial decisions and moves that he makes strategically with his money, with his stocks, with his ownership of his companies. Uh, He's now the new owner of Twitter and leveraging his debt and uh, increasing his lines of credit, paying as little taxes as possible legally and continuously going on down that road. But today, here's the thing. Today, we just want to focus on getting started. We want to pretty much just start by making just one one dollar. Because basically, if you can figure out how to make one, then you can figure out how to make two. And if you can figure out how to make two, then you can figure out how to make three. Or really, at that point, you're going to figure out how to make four. And then you're going to figure out how to make eight. Then you're going to figure out how to make 16. Then you're going to figure out how to make 32. You see what I'm saying? And so on and so on. So while the most important part right now is survival, surviving inflation, surviving the tough economic times we are in and that are only going to get tougher as the days go by, in my opinion, probably for at least the next three to five years at the very least. Oh, and do it while maintaining your Social Security disability benefits in the meantime, because a lot of folks ask, how do I get started? I'll read, I'll read you some of the emails from membering. How do I get started? Uh, how do I start a business? How do I get an LLC going? Look, if you guys want to know, click the links in the description. But honestly, the biggest problem outside of that is I don't know what to start. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want to do yet. And that uncertainty um, will prevent you from doing anything. And the longer you wait, the less likely you are to ever really do it. But like like I said, if you can make $1, then you can make 2 then you can make 4 then you can make 8 But if you don't start to make the 1, then you don't have a chance to make the 2 So for the folks out there who are struggling to figure out what to do and how to do it, I can't tell you what to do. But I will say for me personally, I tend to gravitate towards things that I, I know, things that I'm good at. And things that I'm passionate about because it just makes it easier to do and have that side hustle on the side to create that passive income stream because it's not like extra work. It's just something that I like and I enjoy that I'm good at. So it makes it just very, very easy. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, some people say, I'm not good at anything and, you know, what I like people won't pay for. If you feel that way, then so be it. But at the end of the day, it's odds are probably not true. 
And uh, if you really want to take what you're good at and take what you like and turn it into revenue and money and an income or supplemental income or passive income, then you can. And, uh, you know, this will be the group for you. This will be the group for you. This is not the group for the people who feel like they can't, because if you, if you, if you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. So the biggest one though, is the social security. How can I do this and not lose my benefits? Now I do have some good news for the social security disability benefits for November, 2022. And, uh, some really good news for the folks out there on SSA or SSI, I'm not, or SSDI. But the, the, the point is, is that a lot of folks out there are fixed income, social security benefits, already barely getting by as it is with how much they pay in benefits and seeing the opportunities that exist out there and wanting to learn and know more about how they too can benefit from it. Where, you know, older, maybe a possibly older uh, generation, not super tech savvy and may not even have a network of friends and family who are having the conversations that I'm having with you guys that can help them accomplish these goals. So, you know, let's just let's just back it up just a little bit, because Social Security right now is a little bit of a hot topic. And uh, I was actually watching the news. And I saw there was a social security office that just made, they made people stand outside in the cold. I think it was up North in Indiana or Ohio. Uh, and they, they made the people stand outside in the cold unnecessarily, which was kind of jacked up, but you know, it's a government facility and you know, they were playing games with the protocols and social distancing, despite the fact that Biden has already said that the pandemic is over. CDC lifted all the restrictions and the thing about Social Security, uh, the Social Security system has a million, they have one million cases in process, and they are experiencing extreme delays. Shocker, right? So uh, there are issues getting timely and accurate information. And crazy part about it is 20% of the disability applicants only 20, like roughly 20%, but only about 20%. That's like one out of five, Okay. One out of five applicants will be reviewed annually based on the Biden budget, because as far as how much the Social Security Administration has in their fiscal budget, literally in their employees, in their staff and the workload and how inefficient they are, they're only going to process 20 percent. That's the average number that and with that of that 20 percent being processed you got the potential of about 55,000 people being taken off of benefits as a result of a continuing disability review. And that's a big deal. And you don't want that to happen to you. You want to protect your check. Okay. Now with the social security administration being understaffed on top of that, they lost a lot of people who didn't want to go back to work for the social security administration. And they didn't want to go back in the office post pandemic which is kind of like that situation up in Ohio or Indiana where like these people, they didn't want to go back in the office, whether they were legitimately afraid of the possible threat of being around people or they just were trying to milk the system, neither here nor there. But there are new people. They've brought on new people. And ultimately, you kind of got to be patient with the new people they got because they don't really know what they're doing yet. They're still training, you know. Now, I'm not on Social Security or disability benefits. So the information that I'm sharing with you is from research, is from speaking to people that I know that are on it, that are involved in the system that may uh, actually help other people get their benefits or increase their benefits or maintain their benefits. So Take this for a grain of salt, because like I said, I'm not on Social Security. I'm not on disability benefits. Uh, but I know what is most important is having access to the information. And that's a big deal. The information is it's out there, but it's kind of scattered. It's not all collectively in one place. Uh, sometimes you don't even know if you can trust the information. And oftentimes with the YouTube videos, you have questions. So as you're watching the video and you get the information, but you've got a question, you can't immediately get an answer because it's a video that was pre-recorded, and maybe you can leave a comment, but then it's like, do you get a reply to the comment? So most important is having knowledge, education, and information. Um, 
So like this, making sure your patient portal should re reflect all your medical records, okay? Uh, treatment information that could have uh, had an effect on your benefits, good or bad, is a major game changer. And right now for disability benefit recipients and soon to be disability recipients, uh, this is the best time of year uh, because, and this is some of that good news I was telling you guys about, was because Medicare benefits like dental, hearing, vision, shopping credits, food cards, uh, all the new plans have been released for 2023. And seeing uh, now we're seeing which plan is best for you. And some people don't even know that they can like look at the plans and change them. Like some people set them and forget them and don't realize the plans change and there may be a better plan out there. Uh, but you could keep the one you got or perhaps see what other plans are out there that can ultimately maximize your benefits overall. Now, some major questions out there are what benefits are you entitled to? What types of strategies are best for maximizing your benefits? How do I find the benefits? And again, how can I make more money and keep my benefits? So let's talk about that. Uh, working and supplementing your Social Security benefits income. What are the limits? There are limits. Now, granted, there are limits. So you you can have Social Security benefits and you can make money on the side. You can fall within the uh, limit, uh, the criteria, and be relatively safe as far as annual reviews. Or I think it's like a nine-month window that they give you an opportunity to make money, uh, depending on how much money you make, whether or not it will affect your eligibility. And uh, oh, and then, you know, questions about sh starting a business on Social Security. We're going to touch on that a little bit later, uh, but it is getting easier for some people to supplement their income while on disability benefits, primarily because of freelancing. Now, freelancing is literally what I just talked about earlier, leveraging your skills and by doing it and working only a few hours a day and making money and being successful at it. And that few hours a day is huge, especially when the Social Security Administration wants to review what you're doing to make money and how much time it takes. But, uh, oh, also, so Medicare Part B, the Medicare Part B premium is going down. This is good news. To about like $165, $164 and change or something like that. Not a huge drop, but it is going down, and it adds up. The COLA, cost of living uh, adjustment cost of living increase driven by CPI and inflation, 8.7% increase in disability checks next year, Again, another plus. So I think like the average disability check, Social Security disability check is like $1,350. And then if you factor in the uh, the increase with the cost of living, that's like another $117.45. Uh, so that'll put you at 14, like a little over almost $1,410 a year extra in your benefits. And then you add the Medicare Part B deduction or reduction in premium, and now you're up to like uh, a little over $1,470 extra per year in benefits. Now, granted, the official data will be confirmed and released, I believe, in December. Uh, but at the end of the day, the biggest, you know, like this, this is this is money, you know, that more in benefits that you'll receive that obviously need to be managed and budgeted and stretched. Uh, but with that being said, that's just the beginning. That's the benefits. Now let's figure out how we can supplement and add to that and still maintain the benefits and not lose the benefits. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the biggest problem or maybe the most important question that you should ask yourself isn't, look, I don't think the question should be, how do I keep my Social Security benefits? Uh, how do I keep my disability benefits? And I get that a lot. Kevin, how do I make $700 a day? Kevin, how do I uh, create passive income streams? Kevin, how do I start a small business side hustle? Because I want to. I'm afraid, though, I'm going to lose my benefits. And to me, I don't think that that is the big question. I think the most important answer that I would be looking for is how do I make that dollar? How do I make that dollar? Because I need to make that dollar to make that 
$2, to make that $4, to make that $8, to make that $16, to make that $32, to make that $64, to make that $128. Like we're, we're multiplying here. We're exponentially increasing the amount of money that we're making, but we got to make that dollar first because until I can make enough money, if, and I'm just saying this as if I was on social security benefits and disability benefits, because until I can make enough money for it to be a problem with the social security administration, then it isn't really a problem. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't concern me. It, it's purely a distraction, a scotoma. It's all right. A scotoma is basically a partial, this is the definition from Google, a partial loss of vision, a blind spot that is otherwise blocking my normal field of vision of seeing what needs to be done to start making the money I want. Now, a scotoma isn't specifically tied to money, but in this instance, uh, if you're worried about losing your benefits, then this scotoma of benefit loss is preventing you from seeing your field of vision is being blocked. Uh, of seeing what needs to be done to start making that money. And uh, the money that I would need to make today to survive, survive inflation and war, price hikes, uh, conflict, diesel shortages, labor strikes, rent increases, higher interest rates. You see, the, the list goes on and on. So uh, I'm not concerned, number one, primarily about losing uh my social security disability benefits, because if I can't make the money, then I'm not at risk. You see what I'm saying? Again, I'm not on it, but I'm just speaking from the perspective of someone and the questions I've been asking and the answers that I'm trying to provide to help them see and understand how do, how do we move this along? How do we move those chains? Because honestly, I want to get to a point where I'm at risk of losing my benefits. That means I'm making a lot more money, okay? But with that being said, if I can get to the point of risking the loss of my benefits, but I've then structured my business properly as a low-level employee that works very few hours, then we then we're on to something. Then we're on to something. Now now we're making big money, okay? Now I got something pulled up here. I'm going to read it to you guys. It's on my computer here. And uh it says um this is from AARP. Can I work part-time on Social Security disability? It's a question. And the article reads, yes, you can work while receiving Social Security disability insurance, SSDI, benefits, but only within strict limits. Payments will stop if you are engaged in what Social, in what Social Security calls substantial gainful activity, otherwise known as SGA. Uh and it's defined in 2022 as earnings more than $1,350 a month. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, or $2,260 a month if you're blind. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's actually higher than what I thought it was. So we're talking about uh, you can earn $1,350 a month. With, uh, that's the cap. That's the ceiling of this substantial gainful activity, this SGA, with, without it affecting your benefits. So that's a plus. So not only can you like pull in another $1,470 annually from the cost of living adjustments, the Medicare Part B premium deduction reduction, uh, and um, now you can start making $1,350 a month and still keep your benefits. So if you could, let's just round it down to like, a thousand dollars a month. Let's just say so this is a thousand dollars a month. It keeps you like in the safe area, uh, so you're not like teeter tottering borderline on the edge of making too much. What would you do with another thousand dollars a month? What would you do with another twelve thousand dollars a year? And for the folks that are already on these Social Security benefits that are super super good at budgeting their money and you know using this to survive. I think that that would be huge. I think that'd be huge. And so then it's like, all right, well, if you're looking at it as a thousand dollars a month, then let's break that down to, um, let's just break that down to like $35 a day. Let's break it down to $35 a day. So, um, cause we want to, we want to simplify this. Okay. We don't want to look at it as what, what if I lose my benefits? No. 
we want to look at it as uh, let's let's make that first dollar. So if we're at thirty five dollars a day, we're at one thousand fifty dollars a month. So the question is now, before we get to the how do we make seven hundred dollars a day? Let's just make thirty five dollars a day. You know, let back that up. Let's just make one dollar a day. Figure out how to make that happen. Then we're gonna make two dollars a day. Okay, and then we're gonna make. Four, we're gonna we're gonna double our money, okay? So then we're gonna go to four. So we're going one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. We're getting close to that thirty-five. So you can see how quickly you can accomplish these goals by somebody says, somebody asks, how do you eat an elephant? Elephant, giant, huge animal. How do you eat an elephant? It's like, man, I don't know. One bite at a time. That's it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make $1 at a time. We're going to make that one or two. We're going to make that two or four. We're going to make that four and eight and eight of 16 at 16 to 32. And if we're at, let's just say we're at 32. Let's just say we're at 32. And uh, let's just say I want to make sure my math is right. And I'm, I'm doing this based on 30 days in a month. So if we're making $32 a day times 30 days, then we're making, and if you guys know this already, then you're better than me. Uh, nine hundred and sixty dollars a month. So between thirty two and thirty five dollars a day is the, is the target. You know, let's get the income up. Let's get the income up in a point of which we're not worried about losing our Social Security disability benefits, and then we're going to grow from there. Because then, if you've been able to turn one dollar into thirty two or thirty five dollars a month, then we can turn that thirty two or thirty five dollars a month into sixty four seventy we can turn it into you know one hundred and twenty eight a hundred and forty and just keep going you know to the point at which now we're getting to seven hundred dollars a day at the very least, which can be done I'm not gonna lie it can be done it has been done it's continuing to be done on a regular basis and uh and you know folks out there they do it all the time they do it in so many different ways and um they do it relatively simply and easily. Now, some people do it in a much harder way with like extreme physical manual labor. But then there's other folks out there that they they figured out a way that they can pull this off um, from the comfort of their home. Uh, me, I'm sitting in my kitchen on my phone, sitting on a laptop. So uh, I want to go back into this double this AARP article and and just kind of share with you the information on here, especially if you're wondering about can you make money uh, and keep your benefits. So it says if your income exceeds those caps, then you cannot collect disability benefits unless you're taking part in one of Social Security's work incentives, programs and trial periods aimed at helping SSDI recipients transition back into the workforce without sacrificing their benefits. That's very important. Some work incentives are also available to recipients of SSI, Supplemental Security Income, which is administered by Social Security and also provides benefits to people with disabilities. The major such program is Ticket to Work, which offers people on SSDI and SSI job training, work experiences, and other services to help them become self-supporting. As do other work incentives, Ticket to Work temporarily waives the SGA earnings limits. So you continue collecting your disability benefits while you engage in trial work with employers who have signed up to participate. Now, if you get a job through the program, you go off disability benefits. The payments will resume if you have to stop working because your medical condition worsens. So these are all things that we need to take into consideration, especially if you have medical conditions that could be triggered or worsened by the work. However, knowing that ticket to work exists and you can engage in this temporary working uh, situation and gain on the job training and experience and pay while uh, waiving the SGA earnings limits. Folks, I mean, I'm just saying, Elon Musk is a multi-billionaire, and he's done it in ways of which he's been able to leverage the systems to his benefit. Now, he's not on any uh, government assistance that I'm aware of, but he's used the tools to his advantage to increase his wealth. This is a similar situation. 
Now, SSDI beneficiaries are also allowed a trial period of up to nine months to test their ability to work. The trial months can be spread over or spread out over five years. And during these months, you can get your full benefit regardless of your earnings. You'll find more information on these and other work incentives in the Social Security publication, Working While Disabled, How We Can Help. And this is on AARP's website. So if you guys want to see it, just go check it out. If you want me to do like another video, like a deep dive on it, just comment below. If there's enough comments and I'll go ahead and, you know, if you guys show enough interest, I'll make the video. I don't mind. And uh, because I like learning about this, I like learning and knowing more about ways in which money can be made. Uh, I I don't really think that that can be a bad thing. Having too much, you can never be overdressed or overeducated is what a wise man once told me. So keep in mind, it says AARP says, keep in mind that the SJ limits are adjusted annually based on national changes in average wages. And some work incentives are specific either to SSDI or SSI, while others like Ticket to Work are available to both types of beneficiary. Knowledge, folks, knowledge is key. And here I have a list. I have a few I have a few things I want to share with you guys, but actually I want to share this with you first. Because this 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 little package here I received um and and it 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 goes into what I was telling you guys about with the making $700 a day and connecting with these businesses and these companies and solving problems and creating solutions. Now, let me show you guys. This too also, this too was <laughs> was uh, provided, given to me and, uh, you know, something that I was to review again on a different channel. Uh, but at the end of the day, like this is what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm going to open this up, this Amazon package up so that you guys can see what I got here. And uh, check this out. Check this out. This this is, uh, it says uh, these are wristbands, okay? So you guys may have noticed that I usually wear wristbands. Um it, it, it kind of started with like these resorts and vacations that we would go on and I put them on and I forget to take them off. And then I started getting some, some really cool ones. And, uh, I was like, I want to wear these. Like I like them. They actually had, they had motivational sayings on them and they, and they inspired me and they kind of like took me away from time to time. Like when I'm like work, this is back when I was in corporate America and I'd be sitting there working, grinding away for somebody else, making them a bunch of money. And uh, I would look at it, and then it would remind me of my purpose and, and my goals and my and my and my plan. And this one actually says, "Everything will be fine." I don't know if you guys can see that. Everything will be fine. That's honestly what needs to be thought of on a regular basis because things are things are. I mean, the news things are not looking great. You know, obviously we got a lot going on. A lot of negatives, but if you look at it from the perspective of everything will be fine, then I think I'd rather look at it that way instead of from the uh, alternative of everything's not going to be fine. But I got more here. I got more here from is actually uh, a company that noticed they noticed that I would wear these and they reached out to me and they were like, hey, will you can we send you some wristbands for you to review? Ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm not going to disclose who they are, but at the end of the day, it it helps them. It gets them product reviews, legit product reviews. It gets them feedback. It gets them recognized and noticed so that other people will then go to their Amazon store and, and buy these products. And they have more than just these. They have so many different products. They need people to come to their store just to see all that they have. And this is kind of what I was talking about on the live stream the other day where a lot of folks want to jump on Amazon FBA and sell a product and have the best product out there. But the big one of the hardest things, there's so many difficulties with Amazon FBA, but in order to succeed, really, folks are like, I got to get to the top of the first page, at least not the top. I got to get to the first page. But the alternative there is you could be on any page you want. 
as long as people go directly to your page and by, you know, reviews and affiliates and product reviews and sponsorships and tutorials, all sorts of things, you can attract the attention of people and direct them directly to their page. Then it doesn't matter where they rank in search. And as their sales go up and as their reviews go up, they'll automatically rank up on the page. So it's a win-win really when you think about it. And not only can you get free stuff, but you'll get paid for it too. And this will add to that goal of hitting that $700 a day. You see what I'm saying? Like these, and, and, and when I say $700 a day, it may not be from one particular source. It could be from multiple sources, multiple streams of income, which is good, which is great, especially if you then exceed $700 a day, because then, then you, then you don't have all your eggs in one basket. And as things get better and, and, and gooder and greater, uh, then that will go up. But at the same time, if, if one isn't doing so well, then you still got others that are doing well and supporting you. If one's not doing so hot, but the other ones are, it levels out, it balances out. You got a good equilibrium. And you want to continuously grow and grow on that so that you're not limited and or vulnerable to just a single point of failure. You see what I'm saying? Which a lot of people now... Social Security disability benefits, that's a single point of failure. Um, a regular job, that's a single point of failure. Even being a business owner, if that's your only means of income, that's a single point of failure. So uh, an investor, we talk about the cash flow quadrant, being on the right side of the cash flow quadrant. If you're only invested in one, one thing, that's a single point of failure. If you're only invested in one way, that's a single point of failure. So we want to have multiple streams. We want to have multiple layers of redundancy. We want to have multiple backup plans. We want to have multiple sources of income, multiple solutions. And speaking of which, I got a list here. Making extra money. Earn up to $75. Paid over set over $57 million to members. Uh, getting free stuff. Get $1 instantly just for joining. Uh, there's a list. Like I could go down this list and I can show you guys exactly what these companies are, who they are, how you can find them, how you can get connected with them and start making money. We're talking about daily goodie box. We're talking about swag bucks, panel payday, branded surveys, uh, inbox dollars. Like the list goes on and on. Not to mention you're saying, all right, well, I don't have the skills. I don't have the technology. I don't have this, that, or the other. Look, folks, somebody does. And the way businesses make money is they make money off of other businesses. And you can do the same. You can uh, leverage uh, Upwork. You can leverage Craigslist. You can leverage Fiverr. You could leverage Facebook Marketplace. You could leverage friends, family, um, grandkids, um, siblings, Spouse, you, you, there's so many ways and opportunities out there to accomplish the goal. And then at the same time, everybody's making money at that point. And, you know, to say that you can't, like I said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. All right. And for me, if my biggest concern right now was to figure out a way to personally prepare and financially prepare and build multiple streams of income, perhaps passive income streams, which I got some passive income streams I need to talk to you guys about on the next video because I think we've been here for a little too long. But um, if, if that's the goal, then I need to be putting my best foot forward now to execute on that goal of making money. Then once I have proven the concept and this is what businesses do all the time. They come up with the idea. See, business, the businesses and the investors and the business owners, they're not out there like taking huge risks all the time. They're literally, usually taking very little risk all the time as they are generating ideas, uh, building networks, building teams, building out on these ideas and um, charting out the path and projections of these ideas, possibly even building capital uh, in this time before they take that risk. And then when they take that risk, they take, they take a lot of risk. They go all in on a huge risk, but that risk is calculated 
because they've taken these steps and they've proven the concept before going all in. So that's what we want to do. We want to prove the concept. We want to make $1 and then make $2 and then make $4 and then make $8 and then make $16 and then make $32 or $35 and to the point of which we're making $950 to $1,000 a month. Now, now we're in a good spot. Now we're making money. Our benefits aren't in jeopardy, but we also know that we know how to make more money. So as we are scaling up to make more money, we are preparing ourselves and getting ourselves situated in a way so that the more money we make, it doesn't uh, cancel our benefits and we can continue on this path of success and growing and building. And then perhaps maybe one day you're at a point at which you're saying, all right, I've exceeded the limit and the benefits they're not even worth keeping anymore because of how much more money I'm making outside of the benefits. And, you know, these are things that I never thought that I could do before on my own or with the help of the network, the members, the, the, the group, the team, and just putting on connecting. A lot of times it's just connecting dots, connecting dots. You think about it. I'm connecting a dot basically. So I'll have a brand or a company or a business uh, contact me directly or they'll contact the broker. The broker will contact me and offer me the deal. But the dots that I'm connecting are, I got to get the folks out there, not necessarily you guys, but just people in general, watching the content that I create, the videos that I make, the websites that I make, uh, all the different ways that I promote these companies and get them seen, visually seen. I just connect the dots with the companies and the customers so that they can get together and the customers can give the companies their money and the companies can give the customers value and solutions and solve problems and so on and so forth. Everybody's happy. Everybody wins. And that's what it is. It's connecting the dots. And for folks out there who are saying, I don't have these skills. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the education. I don't have the tech. I don't have this, that, or the other. Well, sometimes I don't either. So that's why I hire people. That's why I contract people. That's why I work with freelancers because they'll help me connect the dot to get what I need, what I want. Early on making YouTube videos, I would connect with video editors. I would connect with thumbnail creators. I would connect with all sorts of folks out there that were doing things that I didn't know how to do or I didn't have time to do because I was working a full-time job or running my, my other businesses. So I would allow them to connect the dot for me to get what I need so that I could ultimately be in a position where I am today to have the reach, to have the channel, to have the, uh, the, the subscribers and the followings and have the ability to connect with these brands and these brokers and these companies to initiate these deals. And I've seen folks even get started day one without a following and pick up deals and pick up sponsors, and pick up backing from companies that know, based on your proof of concept, they are like, I want to I want to get in with you now. I want to support you. I want to help you. I want to grow with you, obviously, because this is going to be an investment for me and my business and the success of my business and increasing my revenues and my profits. But I'm actually going to get a discount because I'm getting in early before you you blow up and before your prices go up and it becomes more expensive to work and advertise with you. But they also know that you are specific in your target and your market and your community and your following and the people interested in what you have to say. So if you look at, like I said, let's just use Mr. Beast, for example. He gets millions and millions of views on his videos. He has millions and millions of subscribers. But if you wanted to market and advertise real estate with Mr. Beast, let's just say you wanted to market Florida real estate. You're a real estate agent. Uh, and, you know, uh, right now, interest rates are going up. Mortgage applications are on the decline. Uh, the housing market, you know, potential crash. I don't see it happening, but let's just say it does. And as a real estate agent, you're thinking, all right, well, I, I, I need I need to sell. I got to sell. I need listings. I need buyers. I need sellers. I need commissions. OK, now, granted, there are other markets where real estate agents have opportunities, folks. Real estate agents in certain markets, especially if you're in Texas, have huge opportunities for making money without selling real estate uh, through renting. Now, if you guys want to know about that, hit me up. Let me know. Drop a comment. We can talk about it. But at the end of the day, real estate agents are saying, hey, 
we need leads, okay? Leads equal money. So leads equal opportunities to make money. And in Florida, it's great because most of the real estate in Florida is crazy expensive. So your commissions are going to be really, really good. But would you rather spend a lot of money and advertise with Mr. Beast on his channel and get so much reach to so many people not interested in real estate? Or would you rather, as an agent, Invest with a smaller channel, local to your Florida market, specifically targeted at speaking to people interested in buying real estate. Like, would you want 10 million views from people that don't really care about what you have to offer because it's not what they're there for? Or would you rather have a thousand views strategically, specifically for folks in your area interested in what you have to say, what services you have to offer what products you have to sell at a fraction of the price because obviously that smaller channel, focus niched, laser focused, sniper focused is going to be less expensive than Mr. Mr. Hundred Million subscriber, Mr. Beast. You see what I'm saying? Hope this makes sense to you guys. Hope I haven't like taken up too much of your time. I do appreciate it if you watched the whole video. Um, and if you did get value out of this and want to see me make more of these, and just drop a comment. Give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video with anybody you think it would be helpful to. And uh, check out the video here. Check out the playlists. And I will be bringing you guys more information on how to make money and how to get your businesses off the ground and how to uh, perhaps get to that $700 a day. More, if you have more interest in product reviews and affiliates and sponsorships and promos and things like that, Super simple stuff. Like I'm talking about literally we get opportunities by businesses to visit their establishments, to record snippets on our phones, to, to, to show to the community and people on different channels. We got a lot of different channels that are interested in what we do, depending on where we are or, or what channel it's on. And we're literally getting comp meals. We're getting free clothing. We're getting paid on top of it for the promotion because like I said before, typically businesses do one thing really, really well. And unless they're a marketing, advertising, promotional business, then odds are that's not what they do really well. With that being said, there are even some marketing, advertising, and promotional businesses that they don't even do that well. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Be be weary of some of these folks that are saying that they're going to offer you. Uh, we're going to post three times a week for you guys for a few hundred dollars. That that post is worthless. Just because they did it doesn't mean it's effective. You want you want quality over quantity. That's number one. Okay. Again, remember, solve a simple problem, get a simple paycheck. Solve a difficult problem, you're going to make a lot of money. And the difficult problem right now that these businesses have are getting visibility, getting customers, getting revenue, getting sales, getting profits. That's what's most important. Solve these problems, you're going to make a lot of money. But with that being said, it's like folks are either good, they're usually good at one, maybe two things. So if you are a restaurant, you're probably really good at cooking and preparing meals. You got a great bar, great atmosphere, whatever it may be. You got some specials, you got some promos, you got some events going on, you may cater, uh, whatever it is. You may be a clothing store and you're really good at boutique clothing, specialty clothing. You may be a contractor, you may be a painter, you may be a uh, do flooring, you may be a plumber, you may be an electrician. But odds are you're really good at those things and you're not really good at marketing and advertising and inbound marketing and bringing in customers and bringing in sales and increasing your reach and building websites and and sh- and, sh- and f- showcasing the work you do and how good you are and how great you are. Odds are you're probably not. So connect the dots. Be that visual. Be that voice for these companies to help them be better at how at what makes them great, number one. As an electrician usually probably doesn't have time to sit and highlight themselves while they're working. They're just working. But you could easily show up and highlight them for them. So that people can see how good they are, how well they work, how professional they are, how they solve problems, how they have great pricing. 
uh, restaurants. Restaurants are huge. Remember, I said food is going to be a major component moving forward. Food, granted, grocery stores, stockpile, prep, whatever, cooking at home, preparing meals at home, but even restaurants out, fast food restaurants, uh, uh, mid-price restaurants, high-price restaurants, they all need traffic. They all need revenue. They all need customers. They all need money. And odds are they're probably busy doing that with cooking and serving and everything that is involved with running a restaurant. And they don't have time, nor are they really good at highlighting all these things to show people, to let them know that they're there, to let them know what they have to offer that some people may be missing and not even aware that exists. You don't know how many restaurants Squirrel Tribe and I have come across and have found by accident that are amazing. And no, like, unless you get word of mouth, unless you just get lucky, it'll stay that way because people don't know you're there, but they are usually just really good at one thing. And that's what makes that restaurant great. And now more than ever, people need visibility, much like the opportunities that exist by simply taking pictures and quick videos with your phones and uploading them to websites that will pay you for this copyright free content that creators can then use on their videos, on their shorts, on their reels, on their TikToks, on anything, on their advertisements, on their commercials, because someone else like you and I have gone out and captured these scenery, these these nature scenes, these animals, these traffic scenes of cars driving by or people walking out in public or, you know, uh, a, a, a major event or a food truck, uh, a food truck outing, who knows what it could be. And some of these are specific and they'll hire you and say, hey, I just need you to go out, possibly take pictures of this or I'm going to send you my products. I need you to take pictures of my products in these environments, in these settings, in these elements. And it's like, if you've got an iPhone, odds are if you've got an iPhone, that camera is of such good quality that you can provide and bring back like professional grade results without being a photographer or a pro. Uh, if you've got the Google Pixel, if you got a Samsung or Android or Samsung Galaxy, odds are you got a good camera, you know, and it's plain and simple, but these businesses are focused on being these businesses. They're focused on doing what they do and they, they need someone to connect those dots for them to provide the, uh, the visuals to bring the people in, to keep them interested. And these are possibilities and opportunities that folks out there on social security, disability, government benefits can easily do on the side in their spare time, in their free time for fun, easy stuff. Doesn't require a lot of tech, a lot of skill, a lot of money up front. And then you can prove that concept and you can make that dollar and then you can make that $2 and you can make that $4. Hell, you could even look at it and say, look guys, I'm going to comp you on this one. Give me a shot. I'll do it for free. And if you generate sales from what I'm doing for you, then I'd like you to hire me to do this continuously. Then you're going to build a resume. You're going to build testimonials. You're going to get feedback. They're going to start vouching for you. You're going to get word of mouth. Such and such did such a great job. They brought me so much business. Oh, business owners talk to business owners, especially those in like the strip malls and the retail centers. They all talk because typically they're not competition. You won't, you know, you won't see similar stores in the same malls because that just doesn't make sense. It's too, it'll be too saturated. So they're all working towards the same goals of revenue and sales and profits, but they're all talking because they're thinking like, all right, if we can just bring more traffic to the center, the shopping center, then we all have a better chance at increasing our sales and seeing greater revenues and more profits. So it would only make sense for each business to talk to the other businesses and say, hey, look, they did a great job for me. They brought people in. You should use them too. They'll bring more people over there. And if you can bring them all in together into, into the shopping center, then you are theoretically not controlling them, but you are cr increasing your visibility. It's like, you know what? I'm going to go over there. I'm going to, I'm going to, it's a shopping center. I'm going to go shopping at, at this clothing store. 
I'm going to go grab lunch while I'm here at the shopping center. I'm going to support my local community at the same time. I'm going to support my local businesses. When I'm done, I'm going to hit this grocery store. It's probably a grocery store in the shopping center. It's like a major anchor. I'm going to, you know, because I don't want to go grocery shopping when I'm hungry. And then I'm going to get groceries and I'm going to go home. Like it works out just, it just works out really well. This is just one example. I've got hundreds, thousands of more examples of what could work, what has been working, uh, opportunities and options that exist. I can provide you guys with links and information. Like I said, the knowledge and education is huge. It's important. With that, you will have the ability to move towards the success success and ultimate goals of creating passive income streams and multiple income streams and generating this money that we all need with inflation going up, wages going down, prices continuously getting higher, economy the Fed, Jerome Powell, pushing to soften the economy and reduce jobs. Now is the time. And if you're on a fixed income, even more so because your income doesn't rise proportionately and or quickly enough with inflation and high prices to survive. Now that we know that the opportunities exist to make money and retain your benefits, we need to start making that first dollar. You see what I'm saying? Let's make that first dollar. Then we're going to worry about down the road, losing benefits. But until you can make that first dollar, you have nothing to worry about. Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Check out this video, watch the playlist, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You guys take care, be safe. See you real soon.